Hello there. Welcome back. I'm Coach Newton, and this is Module 1 of Code on the Road. It's super exciting. This is like your first Code on the Road session, so there's lots to kind of cover. Number one, I wanted to let you know there are props that we used. Um, printing the first 10 slides in advance for the students so they can have a design journal. So we had those ready. I'm going to go through that material, but I just wanted to give you an idea of things to have prepared. We had a design journal book for them to put things into. And we used, for usernames, we used little lanyards. And uh, some of these are different colors, so it's seeing through. But little index cards where we would write their usernames. And we would keep those in the library because students inevitably, inevitably would forget to bring them back. So they would keep their design journals and everything they've created at the end of the series of sessions, whether you decide to have four or three or two or six. So those are kind of a little bit of the material that we used. Um, I'm going to go into the student slides. So again, for the first module, it's called When Clicked Design Journal. And as you saw, the students had a hard copy. And what you'll notice is here in the, the barcode in the corner uh, leads them to, if they have a hard copy, you can scan this with a phone and it takes you to this Google document, these slides, as well as these links down below. So there's multiple ways for students and families to engage outside the library once they have this material. So I just wanted you to know what these barcodes are. And in the first session, we're only going to cover the first four slides. There's a lot going on uh, because you're handing out their usernames, they're getting onto your laptops, they're finding the Scratch website for the first time. There's a lot of logistics that happens that first session. So don't worry about the speed of which you get into the content. I just want to make sure you're prepared. And one of the first things I do is I usually share this slide up on the screen and then you'll notice there is a a one Your minute prompt is to create a project where a user get so I'm not going to go play it it's a one minute video and you can go you'll notice you can go full screen and show it so the whole class gets to see the ultimate goal is students and I recommend you as well create a project where something happens that's a surprise to the user when they click on the stage or Sprite, and the Sprite is a character in Scratch. So hopefully you've watched that 20 minute intro video um, that I mentioned in the content orientation slides. If not, please go back and take a look at that. That'll help you a lot. And so that's kind of the first slide. They write their names, their usernames. I recommend they write their password on here, whatever you've created. Again, keeping it generic. Yes. And then, and then you go to the next slide. You'll notice slide two is purple. It's a reflection. And right away, this is a slide that they'll be coming back to at the end of the sessions. So this is just so they get their name on there and they realize they're going to fill this out at the end and capture a simple reflection. Now, whether you as the librarian or coach add a response, that's up to you. It depends on your session. Everything's super flexible. But the important thing is to carve out five minutes at the end, 10 minutes at the end, where they stop and reflect on that day. And here are four helpful prompts they could start their sentence with. So it's fine if they use one of these, or again, what they decide to write is up to them. The key is getting that reflection. So that's the first two slides already. So the third slide is this inspiration studio. So you can take them to this link, which um, I'll show you here has several projects uh, for them to choose from. So I'm going to go back. So once they get to that page, this guides them through, right? Here is the photograph of these projects. Have them look at all the projects and play them. And then write down what is which one was interesting to them. And then also highlight that they can do a C inside. So for example, if I had chosen, say, the Cat Party Launcher project, and here's the C inside button, that they start realizing, whoa, there's a lot of code there that they can start to learn from. Um, and then they can look for these specific blocks that are based on creating a reaction from the computer when someone clicks on the sprite, because these are example projects. So 
intended to be in, in, an inspiration source for students, for those that say, hey, I'm not sure what to do. And again, going back to ideas that are relevant to your local library, what is happening locally that can be a theme for a student's project. Again, allow them to pick, but it's nice if you serve them several prompts that align with things that are specific to your locale um, and, and and provide some helpful local inspiration there. So we would do fairs. There were towns that had a certain mascot that we offered students to make a project about the mascot books that are being read. Maybe there's a theme that summer for a library reading contest. Again, it's wide open. It's creativity, including yours. So that's the, the fourth slide. And then the next slide is, is slide four is to then for them to go ahead and start creating their project. So they are going to sign in to Scratch MIT DU and they'll start creating their project. And here's where some of the ancillary details from the previous documentation kind of showed, oh, how do you share a project in the studio? Uh, how do you share with students uh, between students at the end? I would typically put something on the big screen uh, for them where they could see some other students' projects if they wish to be uh, have their project shared. And I found that would always generate a lot of excitement as well because uh, they're proud of their work. They get to see others sharing their work and it would bring forward by four sessions some some students that in the beginning didn't want to share and they realized um, that they could participate in that fund. So hopefully it would open that up for them. So that's the first four slides. So that kind of covers session one. That'll gobble up one hour very, very quickly. And then for the second session of One Click, we start with getting unstuck. So the key to unstuck strategies is having the students engage in ideas of how do they solve problems when they get stuck rather than just raising their hand and waiting for someone to provide an answer can they follow these steps asking friends breaking it down so i recommend again showing this slide having them comment what strategies do they use uh, it's very intended to be very interactive it's not meant to be fill out a worksheet activity and then the next slide is when you share a project and you can show that to others. Uh, here are some encouraging ways for them to provide feedback on projects they see created by others. My favorite part, I like the way you did X, Y, Z. Uh, you should continue to do this. Um, and then to provide ideas for others that, oh, I didn't see something. What if you added this? Oh, you could try adding music to your project. And then switch, have them provide feedback on their own project. So that way you can pair some classmates and uh, fellow participants together. Um, so, and this one, is, again, this is for kind of the second session. I've had some where we went very, very slowly. It took us three sessions to get through module one. There is no set time limit. It's the pace that works for you and your class. It depends on so many variables. It's hard for me to set down the rules. I've kind of uh, toned down the number of slides here to kind of make it uh, somewhat contained, so you have something to work with, but always feel free to expand. Uh, the README section, this is again, can they look at this code and highlight when they look at this code, what will happen if someone clicks on this sprite? What will happen if they click on this base? And they can write in here what would happen on a project that had this code in it. So it starts getting them used to not only building their code, but reading others. So it really helps with that uh, literacy for interpreting code from others. Uh, making a plan. So this is to help solicit, okay, what is it in the second session or third session? What are they going to make another project about? So I try to encourage students in each session to create a whole new project. Sometimes I know they want to go back and finish the first one. That's okay as well. But I like to create the iterative practice. Practice just create, create, create. And it's okay if the first one's not finished. They can always continue at home. Um, again, at least having the ideas written down of a new project. What are they thinking of next? Hopefully they've been inspired by things they've seen happen around them in, in those sessions. And then at the very, very end, there's a self-assessment slide. Again, part of the reflection element. I always have them do the other, that second slide. Um, 
reflection just every week. And then the self-assessment kind of pops up at the end of modules. So this one again is, you know, what is something they're proud of that they've done in these categories of personalization? What was the surprise they had? Did they work with somebody? And it's okay if they didn't work with anybody in the community. And then how did they persevere? Highlighting students' perseverance is important for them to recognize that they are putting out effort. They may not recognize that. It's good to call it out and bring it to their attention. And then this column is to have them forward think and imagine what other things could they do in future projects that they haven't tried yet related to personalization, surprises, engaging in the community, and effort. And these are optional for them. You know, what inspired you? And if there's anything else, again, a lot of this and whether you write a response is up to you. And that's it. This is the 10th slide that basically is just to give credit to where this content came from and my small remix participation to kind of hone it down. If you have some super advanced students, uh, I just want you to know in this link, there are more slides. These are what I call the bonus slides. So there's something that they can remix. They could brainstorm some ideas. They could leave comments. Um, provide red, yellow, green comments to others. Think, pair, share. They could storyboard. Uh, provide notes and credits. How do they do that in their Scotch project? And how do they provide comments on code? So these are more advanced slides. So you can see I even had some of these that just weren't used. And I rarely, honestly, got into the bonus slides. The remixable sometimes was fun for those that are advanced because they take a project and they remix it and have a starting base project to build upon. So hopefully I've covered everything with you. And uh, again, leave comments on the video. I'll try my best to answer those. Um, but that's part of the fun of code on the road. You never know what you're gonna get. And this is one of our libraries, as you see in the background. They even had a book sale that day. <laughs> that did not stop us from doing code on the road. They just moved the boxes aside and we're chugging away on their projects. So I look forward to seeing what you create next. We'll see you.